Fructose. Everyone thinks it's bad. Yeah. So we're going to talk about what it is, whether it's bad for you, why it even matters. Welcome to Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Lamb. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. Never has there been an R so important in a word as <laughs> fructose. I knew you were going to go there. Okay, so what is fructose? Fructose is a monosaccharide. Yep. Its chemical formula is C6H12O6, like glucose. Yes. It's like glucose, but it's an isomer to glucose, which means yeah. it's the same molecules, just set up differently, which yes. is crucial because that different way that it's set up means the body metabolizes it in a different way than glucose. Right, so it's like a ketose group instead of an aldehyde group. Glucose has the aldehyde group, right? Yes. That, we should spend a minute on the sugars. Sure. There's, so you have glucose, yes. that's the energy in your body. Body uses glucose to get energy. Right, every in cell the, uses glucose. Right. Yeah. Fractose is an isomer to glucose, so yes. same chemical formula. If you stick a glucose and a fructose together, you've got a disaccharide now, that's sucrose, nice. or also known as table sugar. Nice. Look okay. Sugar. Don't be fooled with dextrose, which is really glucose. It's just like D-glucose, so it's very similar to glucose. Let's change the name. Yeah. Okay. So, so fructose is something that's found naturally mm -hmm. in fruits and vegetables and honey. It's also found unnaturally that's awesome. in pop and candy and sweets. Right. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in, uh, in a second. So when you, when you eat something that has fructose, regardless of what it is, that fructose it goes into your stomach and then it gets absorbed in the small intestine. Once it gets absorbed in the small intestine into your bloodstream, then our body has to decide what to do with it. Right. What's unique about fructose is that 90% of fructose is metabolized by your liver. Which is weird, okay? Because yeah. glucose stays in the bloodstream and your body uses it in the bloodstream. It's like a quick energy boost. Right, everywhere. All the and cells it's do. It's so weird that it's the same molecules there, same atoms, just in a slightly different way. Now all of a sudden it gets shunted to the liver. Right, and the reason that the liver does most of the heavy lifting there is because it has an enzyme uh, called fructokinase that phosphorylates this uh, fructose molecule to process it. So. Normally, when you have a small amount of fructose that goes in, your, your liver deals with it. And what it usually does, it breaks it up into free fatty acid. Mm -hmm. And then free fatty acids, depending on the amount of them, can be um, packaged as a triglyceride. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they will actually be stored as a fat or packaged with a lipoprotein. And they're sent out actually as very low density lipoprotein. LDL. Yeah, so the VLDL, and then that could potentially be cleaved to become LDL. So you're like, wait a second, are you telling me that sugar can lead to high cholesterol? And that's what's messing up my blood work. So, so this is part of it. We're going to talk about kind of the metabolic consequences of high um, fructose consumption a little bit later. Okay, so now you know kind of where it lives, what it does. Um, and then what happens too is there's excess fat, this can lead to fat deposition. So not only fat in your liver locally, so mm -hmm. when we talk about non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is the number one cause of liver transplant these days in North America, stores fat in the liver, it actually, as it gets packaged, it goes to local organs, they say, hey, we got too much free fatty acid, we got to deal with this, so your organs can get fat. So we've talked about visceral fat. If you remember some of our <laughs> previous videos, the visceral fat is the bad stuff. It's very it's bad. That. Metabolically active, can secrete hormones that cause lots of medical problems, as well as it preferentially gets deposited in your abdomen. So truncal obesity, which we know is a risk factor for lots of medical conditions. So this fat is a problem because of the fructose. Okay, so first, Let's talk about whole foods. So if you're eating it in fruit, Paul. Okay, so that's my question. You're saying fructose is bad. Yeah. And now you said fructose is in a lot of fruits. Yeah. So if I eat these fruits, is that bad for me? So what I, the short answer is no. And if you go online, there are actually going to be a lot of influencers, particularly people who are um, aggressive proponents of the keto diet mm -hmm. or the carnivore diet saying all fruits are horrible for you. So I'd say the truth is probably not. I don't believe anything I see online. Careful. Okay, so um, when you eat it in fruit, it comes with a whole bunch of other good stuff, just like all whole foods, right? It comes with fiber, it comes with vitamins, and it comes with antioxidants that reduces your body's response to when you take it in because it takes more time. You don't have big spikes in, in your sugar levels. Mm -hmm. A whole bunch of fructose doesn't flood your bloodstream and then overwhelm your liver. So when you eat it in its whole form, um, I would say it would be very unlikely that you cause problems. You have to eat a lot of, a lot of fruit. like three or four servings with every single meal to have a problem related to that. Having said that, if you are diabetic and you recognize that certain fruits mm -hmm. increase your sugars more regularly, then just modify them. Mm -hmm. So everything in moderation. Fair. Fair? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So fruit, fructose in fruits is okay. Fructose in, fructose in fruits is okay. Fructose in fruits is fine. Did you ever, did you ever see? It always goes back to a movie for me. 
Do you ever remember that scene in This Is 40 when yeah. Paul Rudd's like, fruits? What yeah. kind of fruits? Yeah. She can have vegetables and fruits. So, oh, she can eat fruits? Fruits, yeah. Um, any kind of fruit? Mangoes, pineapple. It isn't like there's safe fruits and then there's no, unsafe no. fruits. No, no. Yeah, fruits. <laughs> Funny scene. Yeah. 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 Okay. Fructose and fruits is fine. Right. So, so fruit in and of itself is okay. What I would say is if you are worried about your sugars is maybe avoid fruit juices, unfortunately, because that does strip all the fiber and that has a higher chance of causing problems. I drink a lot of fruit juice. I know, I know you Orange do. Orange juice every And morning. so this could contribute to your cholesterol. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is dehydrated fruit. So um, Ooh, yeah. again, the, the concentration of the sugars, the natural sugars in these types of products is much higher. Yeah. So really proceed with caution. Like it a fruit roll up? I th I'm not sure there's any fruit in a fruit roll. Or Fruit Loops. <laughs> fruit Loops, keep going. Juicy fruit, gum. <laughs> That's pretty good, I thought I was gonna get to there. No. Anything else? No. No, okay. Fruit Punch. Fruit Punch, uh, yeah, so, so all those things really don't have fruit. Okay, so now let's talk about the elephant in the room. All right. High fructose corn and syrup. You don't wanna be that elephant in the room. People are like, what is high fructose corn syrup? Then you just said fructose is not bad for me. Yes. But high fructose corn syrup, you don't even have to watch the end of the video. It's very bad for you. Okay, mm -hmm. so why does it even exist? So the history behind high fructose corn syrup is very interesting. Take so, us through it. So the government, particularly in the U.S., historically has been involved in agriculture, mm -hmm. trying to make it more viable for farmers, right. make it more functional for the community, it's provide uh, good food at a fair price, and then also provide something they could export to improve their economy. Thank you. Yeah, so in the 70s, there was a guy named Earl Butts. Stop. Yeah, you can't really? make you can't make this up. Slow so, hanging fruit. So it is. So he was an agricultural economist. He was not a farmer, okay. but he was involved or interested in the economics of farming. Mm -hmm. So he did his undergrad at Purdue, went to Cornell, a couple good schools. Yeah. Eventually got hired by uh, President Eisenhower to do some stuff, and then his work with Eisenhower made Nixon notice him. Nixon's like, you know what? Let's make this guy the Secretary yeah. of Agriculture. Yeah, get this butts in here. <laughs> get it. Get your butts in here, Earl. <laughs> So in I'm the early 70s, thief. he became the Secretary of Agriculture. And his main goal was to um, make farming big, yep. successful, efficient. So part of make this is- Make farming great again. Make farming great again. Less successful hat back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, but he pushed farmers to be big. It's either mm -hmm. get big or get out. Yeah. And so this led to monocropping, particularly of corn, soy, and wheat, which if you talk to some farmers, this is, has all sorts of problems of its yeah, own when you have soils, a single crop, right? Yeah. It's, bad for, it's bad for the environment. So they had all this corn, and then they subsidized farmers to make corn, so corn became very cheap to grow, mm -hmm. very cheap to purchase. Okay. So what do you think happens when you disrupt the normal market? You got a surplus here. You got all this corn, you're like, what are we gonna do with all this corn? It's too much corn. So then they realized, corn's very sweet. Who doesn't love corn on the cob in the summer? Corn on the cob, barbecue it. It's so good and it's yeah. so sweet. So mm -hmm. those sugars, someone realized, hey, you know, we can get something called fructose mm -hmm. out of the corn and create a very, very concentrated, very, very sweet, corn-based syrup mm -hmm. called high fructose corn syrup. And they started putting it everywhere because yeah. it was cheap. So it actually superseded the market for beet sugar right. and cane sugar, which were a little more complicated to harvest and couldn't be grown as many places. So it became the sweetener of choice. Yeah. Put in everything. And when I say everything, I mean like ketchup. And then this coincided with the increase in ultra processed foods mm -hmm. and they snuck it into everything to make it more palatable. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, this led to a very specific correlation with the spike in obesity, mm -hmm. um, metabolic syndrome, and diabetes of the mid 70s, and has continued on into 2025. Maybe okay. they should take the R out of fructose. Right. Because that's what it did to the whole population. <laughs> did it not? It sure did. And, and so it's been shown to be correlated with increased incidence of type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, um, as well as. Um, Abdominal and visceral fat. The visceral fat, like, the one that's gonna get you. So, so why does this matter? Well, because of the amount of it, mm -hmm. because of its rapidly absorbed uh, nature in the small intestine. So your liver gets overwhelmed, makes the free fatty acids, packages it as triglyceride, leads to VLDL and LDL, and then all the consequences that we talked about. And it about. tastes so good. On the sweet yes. scale, yes. if you got sucrose, which yes. is a fructose and a glucose, it's yeah. table sugar, and that's a one, Glucose is at about a 0.75 on the yep. sweet scale. Fructose is like 1.25 or 1.75. It's like way higher right. than regular table sugar. It's just really sweet. Yeah, and like a, a, like a soda, typically 55% mm. ish 
of the sugar in that soda is actually fructose. Right. 45 right. glucose, 55. Because if, if sugar is a main ingredient, that yeah. is a glucose and a fructose. It's a condensation reaction. You join those two, you get a water molecule, and now you've got this sucrose. Nice. But then you break it up in your body, right. and then you've got your fructose. So, so the, I say the take-home message for me is fructose in and of itself is not bad. In its whole form, just like so many other things, it's good for you, yeah. actually. Keep the R in fructose and eat it in your fruit. Okay, so that's the first thing. Second thing is, high fructose corn syrup is bad for us. And it is found in all the things that we know are bad for us. Highly processed food. Yes. We know that we should limit the consumption of these kinds of foods, but yes. they are unfortunately cheap, available, they have long shelf lives, so they're very convenient. And they taste so good. Right. The other thing I'd say is that, like we've talked about in other videos, sugar itself doesn't necessarily cause diabetes, like being sweet kind of thing, mm -hmm. but secondarily can lead to diabetes and also can affect your cholesterol, which can lead to atherosclerosis and contribute to heart disease. And now all of a sudden you're on medication. Right, and you didn't even know that. You're like, listen, I look at my label, I have no cholesterol, no fat in everything that I ate. Zero fat intake, yeah. zero cholesterol intake. How do I have cholesterol? Well, maybe it's the high fructose cholesterol. Maybe the fructose gotcha. Yeah. And yes, advances in agriculture are important for us. Yes. You know, we've, we've got a lot better at a lot of stuff, but there are consequences to messing with the market economy. A pain in the butts. <laughs> now you know. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, leave a comment about you and your high fructose corn syrup experience. You are in charge of your own health, and now you can be in charge of how much fructose you take in. There you go. See you next time.